Hello everyone, welcome to Decades. Today in this video I'm going to be talking to you about the history of steam and steam power. More appropriately, the early days, you know, how did we get from swimming around in swamps and mud to building machines like this. So to start off with, I'm just going to show you my Mamod SRA traction engine. And uh, I'm going to talk you through how it works. So this steam engine is known as a high pressure steam engine. It uses the steam under pressure to drive a piston, which then turns a crank, which causes motion. And uh, I'll be steaming this up for you today on camera. And whilst we're waiting for it to steam, I'll be telling you about the early history and uh, it's going to be beautiful and it's all going to be fun and we're going to enjoy it and you're going to enjoy it. And I don't know about the last thing. So, um, traction engine the principles of a boiler so the way you make steam work for you is you have to have a heat source to boil water to create steam you also have to have some sort of chamber to collect that steam and put it under pressure so on my traction engine I have a firebox here and then this round bit here is the boiler and this is the smoke box on the front it's redundant on this model uh, because it's just literally a black brass slug you fill up with water but in real life there'll be tubes going through there and when the fires burn it gets drawn through creating more heat and a more surface area but again that's going to be covered in a video so first things first to setting it up is water we need to fill it up with water now it's not steam for a long time oh that's fun it'd be good if we could actually get the bloody thing in the hole that's what she said come on what about if I do that? There we go. Is any of it actually going in? <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to have to stand up for this one. Is any of it going in? Yeah, I'm going to have to get you, some, get you to get me some more water. Oh, we're at half a glass. A bit more. They call him half a glass Jones. <sighs> there we go. So I'm going to sit back down now. So that boiler's full with water now. And uh, in, a, in a clip that we're going to overlay, I'll show you where the water level actually sits in the boiler. So if you look around to this glass here on the side, you can actually see where the water level is. Now, those little two brass arrow marks there, you shouldn't fill the boiler any more than that. We're a little under, I, I think it'll be all right. We'll be fine. So, yeah, so boiler's full of water, brilliant. I'm gonna replace the safety valve. This uh, device here, if there's too much pressure in the boiler, it'll allow steam to escape. Steam will press up on the bottom of the valve, lifting it up thusly. And, you know, it reduces the pressure in the boiler. So I'll just screw that back in now. Mmm, sludge. Screw that down. Well, that's everything but short of setting a fire now. So this is my fuel. Hexy block. Smells like a bloody orgy. It's salty and fishy. I'm going to put my hexy in there, inside my firebox. I'm going to put a bit of that in there as well because it's a pain to light. <laughs> it's hexy. Now, steam engines normally use coal um, or coke in the early, early days just because it's got a lot more uh, calories in it. So, you know, compared to wood, Coal has a higher calorific value and it burns a lot hotter. There we go. Just another couple of pieces. Let's have a look in there now. One more piece, I think. Let's light it. Now, children, it's important. Get your parents to help you with this part. He never did. And look at me, I'm a megalomaniac now. Love awesome. Yep, you just have to wait for the hexy block to catch now. So now we've got a fire inside our engine. The first instance of steam power being used by humanity is in first century Greece by a person called Hero of Alexandria. 
Now this clever bloke was a uh, geometrist, which for those of you out there, and I didn't even know when I was researching this, it's someone who studies geometry, which I just thinks, why? Wouldn't that just be a geometrist? Well, it's just a geometrist. <laughs> Geometry. <laughs> geometer. Fuck knows. The yeah, Greeks are weird. Hero of Alexandria was a geometer, which I didn't even know, but it's someone who studied geometry. His invention proved that steam can be used for a form of propulsion. His invention included a base with a small sphere underneath it, filled with water, with two tubes coming up and another sphere on top. This sphere rested on them tubes and also went into it, it could spin. And then out the sphere were two angled tubes. If, if it makes sense, it's a bit hard to explain, but we'll put a graphic up. No, we won't. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> we will put a graphic up. Basically, when the water was heated, it turned to steam, go up into this top sphere, and then come out the two opposing jets and cause the spheres to spin. Now, aside from it just being a nice little party trick for the hero of Alexandria, it didn't really get much for or looking at, you know, because, you know, the Greeks were very good at inventing things, but, you know, how often did some of this stuff actually come into practice? Most likely because they didn't have the technology at the time to make something large scale out of some, some, something like this. So, um, so he was the first person that we know of to have actually used steam power. Right, I'm just going to interject here because like this. Picking shit when that happens. <laughs> so this is enough steam now to start doing some train type things. So I'm just going to stop for a second and just come on, work. Hey, steam power. Ah, that is hot. <laughs> so. Basically, you can see here is uh, hot steam under pressure. <laughs> I just got a gob full of smoke. Hot steam under pressure is causing that piston to drive, and uh, turn the crank, which turns this flywheel. I, I was actually surprised how quick that came into steam, to be honest with you. Now, an important thing for any engine man is a good brew. This brew is shit. Yeah, you made it yourself. Look at that. I'm actually quite happy. It's bit, like, this is a few years since this engine's ran. Uh, I've just couldn't be asked to run it, so. I've never seen it run this good, actually. Come on, you bastard. It was running too good, too good to be true. That's better. It's not quite as manic now. I've just put it on a slightly slower speed. Um, we'll just enjoy it running for a bit. He right. just loves that too much. I can be very annoying with a whistle. I used all the pressure and it stopped. In 1655, Edward II Marquess of Worcestershire. Marquis. Marquess. Marquess. Hmm? What's a Marquess? Marquess. Oh, are you right, Marcus? That's like a. Oh, yeah, you are. You are right about that. Hang on, I was very confused then. That's on me. <laughs> Dumb fuck. <laughs> oh Christ! I need to get down with the kids on this one, right? Look, this is my sphere of influence, Ethan. Yeah, it's that's mine. That's I got down with the railway kids on, on the register, so. I'll start again. Watch it now, that's going to be the only good take if you interrupted it, and I'm just going to get it wrong for ad infinitum. In 1655, Edward, the second Marquess of Worcestershire, published a book called The Century of Inventions, which detailed a hundred different inventions one of which was an early steam engine. Its design detailed it being built out of a cannon because why not, you know? I don't know, I don't get his thinking. I mean, partly because the book has been lost to history, I guess, because I've not been able to find any information on it. So that was in 1655. In 1663, he started building his engine 
in his Vauxhall workshop and not the car Vauxhall, place called Vauxhall, in his Vauxhall workshop. His book was eventually published in 1663. In the same year, Samuel Sobery visited Edwards Vauxhall workshop where it was described, and I'll have to read the quote here, it was designed for the purposes of irrigation and would rise to the height of 40 feet by the strength of one man and in the space of one minute of time, four large buckets of water. So basically what he's saying, it could lift four large buckets of water quicker than any one man could. So why didn't this make the Industrial Revolution happen a hundred years earlier? Well, the simple answer was, Edward didn't have any investment for his new invention. No one wanted to be a part of it. So he actually said, I'd like to be buried with the model of my engine. So when he died, he said, bury me with the coffin, you know, in the coffin with the engine. Many years down the line, this is when, like Queen Victoria was on the throne, uh, grave robbers to come in and try and find his model of his steam engine. They actually broke into his family tomb and um, rummaged around looking for this uh, engine. Search it, it's actually interesting. I'm not going to tell you about it. You know, you're going to have to do this from that yourself. What a shit history channel this is. <laughs> <laughs> when was the first practical and commercially viable steam engine made then? Well, in 1712, Thomas Newcomb had this brilliant idea using the principle that steam contracts when cooled. He built his engine which involved a large beam with two half circles either side. On one side you had a counterweight, the other side you had a piston and a cylinder. The counterweight would pull the beam up. On the other side, the piston would be draw, drawn up, cylinder would fill with steam, and then a jet of water would be sprayed into the cylinder, causing the steam to contract, pulling the entire counterbalance up, raising the counterweight. And then the counterweight would bring it down, piston go up, draw steam in, squirt of water, contract, and it draw it back down again. This machine, this engine, was designed for pumping water out of mines, as before this they were just using buckets on ropes. So, you know, like a well basically. But how does it actually work? Action. I enjoy pee. Dick. <laughs> the main principle Newcomb's engine works by is latent heat and the fact that steam contracts when it's cooled. Whereas my engine has a boiler that's high pressure, Newcomb's boiler for his engines was a bit like a pizza oven. You have a lot of coal fire underneath, a brick roof, and your water on top, and it was just collected. It weren't really under much pressure at all, maybe 20 pounds per square inch at the most. We'll give you a bit of a practical demonstration of the principles that that engine works on as well. Yep, it has created a vacuum. It wants to go. Keep it recording. Yeah. Keep it recording. So what do you mean by it's created a vacuum? It has sucked water. Instead of crushing the can, which it was supposed to do, it's crushed, it sucked all the water up inside it. Isn't that nice and cool now? No, it's well hot, but there's water all the way up it. Basically what's happened, instead of it crushing the can, which I wanted it to do, it's gone, ha, no, and sucked all the water up inside it. So that's the steam contracting and drawing the water up instead of the steam contracting and crushing the can. So, yeah. Maybe it's just the sturdy can. That is hot. Just to show you, look how much water comes out of that. It's the practically an entire can's worth. I only filled it just to cover the bottom. So it proves that Thomas Newcomb's engine principle works. By 1735, there were over a hundred of Newcomb's engines at various places across the country. And by 1800, there were over 2000 in England. John Smeaton improved Newcomb's design by improving the seals on all the joints, making leakage less likely to happen and also making them up to three times more efficient. 
1759, James Watt, who was a instrument maker and maintainer at the University of Glasgow, was introduced to steam power by one of the university professors. Almost immediately, he fell in love with the idea of steam power and read every single book he could possibly find on the subject. Eventually, James Watt further developed the concept of latent heat. He thought that he could make Newcomb's machines up to 80% more efficient. Instead of using the steam to contract and draw, he could use it to actually power the machines. Watt had learned that the University of Glasgow had one of Newcomb's engines in a model form, and he demanded that it be brought back to Glasgow from London, from where it was being repaired. But upon its arrival, James Watt was mildly annoyed to find that the model was almost impossible to work. It kept breaking and was extremely unreliable. In Newcomb's design, after the power stroke there was a spray of water. Watt decided that if he removed the water to a different cylinder after it had been sprayed, it would cause the steam to condense more quickly. Therefore, the, the engine would run faster and more efficiently. This turned out to be a resounding success, and upon publishing it, it took off almost immediately with what taking out a pattern for his new design. His design was successful virtually overnight, with his modifications being able to be fitted to a machine in situ without any need to build a brand new building or new engine, which made it more cost efficient for mine owners. What joined up with Matthew Bolton to create the Soho Foundry so that they could be the sole providers of all these upgrades for these mine machines. As the 18th century progressed, inroads were made to high pressure steam. Instead of using the latent heat principle, the steam was actually being used to drive a piston, which is far more efficient. Watt was set dead against high pressure steam as he thought it to be dangerous. With the current technology at the time, boilers were liable to explode. So, Watt, with his patent, held a virtual monopoly over all high-pressure steam in the UK. In 1811, Richard Trevithick was tasked with upgrading a Cornwall-type engine to high-pressure steam. This would go on to shape the future of the Industrial Revolution. And with that, we will have to wait for the second video to come out. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was a bit of a short one, but it's to give you a basic background into steam power and basically what I'm going to be talking about but in the next episode, I'll be going into detail about the birth of the railways, the Cotton Wars, and all other manner of fun things. So subscribe and stick around for part two. So thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please press like and subscribe. Maybe share the channel with some of your mates. Uh, I do apologize, I have been a bit under the well. Bit under the well. Under we'll the well. With, we'll go with under the well. Under the well. Under the weather. I've been a bit under the weather in this video, under so... Under the well. Yeah. Like I, I, I would have loved to be a bit more enthusiastic. Um, but I hope you enjoyed, and until next time, see you then. Until next time, see you then. Yes. As, in you, as if you're going to see them there in between now and what is next time. Yes, I will. <laughs>